I don't mind answering questions from the viewers because they're very, very valuable. And one question from one viewer could hit a lot of people. So there's never a dumb question. One thing though, is that when somebody's asking me a lot of questions and they're very detailed, and again, I wanna help you. However, I would rather have you go to my website and let's set up a time. Let's set up a half hour, 45 minute consultation. You can go pay through it, you know, through my webpage and we could sit one-on-one -on -one either on the phone or a Zoom call because you do have a lot of valid questions. However, I can't monetize all my time to, those, to that one single question, which I rather have you bundle up the questions and we can make it a 30 or 45 minute session so we can go back and forth. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Dr. Juwad, a chiropractor and a functional medicine specialist. Functional medicine is a science and practice of restoring health and reversing chronic health problems. I use specialized laboratory testing, not offered by traditional doctors, to discover the underlying cause of your current condition to create your individual healthcare plan. I do not look for the what that is causing your issues, I look for the why that is causing your chronic illnesses. So work with me and get the professional help you deserve to begin feeling yourself again. Click on the link below to schedule your free 15 minute consultation. We can talk over the phone, face to face or over Zoom. Thank you very much and have a great day. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. I posted a video, I'll put the link down below. This will help increase dopamine levels, which will make you feel better. Now, that's great. I'm getting emails and re email responses saying, okay, I could see how that also increases testosterone. However, when I'm with my significant other for long periods of time, it's zapping my testosterone levels. I just feel pooped. So I'm taking this, but it's really not working. In addition, in so many words, the horse doesn't even want to leave the gate or the horse wants to leave the gate but it can't it gets on the trek and it has a hard time finishing the race what is up with this prolactin hello everyone this is dr juwad four things one hit the like button down below two hit the subscribe button three hit the bell notification because when i upload videos like this you'll be first to be notified and fourth leave a comment Leave something, I like it, I don't like it, I don't like this, I don't like that, what do you think, so forth and so on. Because YouTube and Google, they work together, so the more activity I have on my webpage, which I always appreciate, the bigger and broader the audience I can get. Thank you. Okay, so I did a previous video, and I have the link down below, for a product called Mucana Periodons. Now what that does, the function of that is to increase dopamine. Now doing the research on dopamine and serotonin and all those nice neurotransmitters which will help increase or decrease testosterone levels, one thing that is overlooked with males and that's prolactin. Prolactin is your best friend but mostly your worst enemy because prolactin and dopamine they work inversely. So the more dopamine that's released, what that's going to do, that's going to increase your prolactin levels. Why? Because it's a safety mechanism, of course, when it comes to sexual function. Okay, so when doing research on dopamine and serotonin, I get a lot of emails coming in and they're asking, hey, what about the dopamine, testosterone, and this weird hormone called prolactin? Because guys who want to build up muscle or if they're on testosterone therapy or they just want to get in shape, there's a lot of factors involved that enable a man to build to make testosterone available for building. I've done a previous video about DIM and there's a lot of questions about does DIM actually increase testosterone? It does indirectly because it frees it up. It's not gonna take zero to, you know, to 100. It's gonna free up the available free testosterone so it can be utilized. Now when it comes to the hypothalamic gonado, gonad access, otherwise known as the HPG axis, this is how the body works to secrete and make testosterone. So it starts off with the brain. We have a gland called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases to the pituitary, I'm sorry, to the anterior pituitary gland, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonado, gonado, gonads, tropin releasing hormone. That sends a positive signal to the anterior pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone, and follicle stimulating hormone. Has a positive effect, it goes in the bloodstream to the testes. Now we have two different cells in the testes. 
one type of cell called Leydig cells and the other cell called Sertoli cells. Now Leydig cells, its function through a luteinizing hormone is to produce testosterone. Through the anterior pituitary gland, the follicle stimulating hormone acts on the Sertoli cells to release androgen binding protein, which testosterone and androgen binding protein, they bind together. And what happens is that we have a, we have a, a function called spermatogenesis. This is the formation of sperm. The immature sperm to the mature sperm and, and it gets stored until it gets released. Now we work on a feedback loop. So basically, I always say if, when the tanks are full, it's going to send a signal to the hypothalamus say, hey, relax, we don't need any more. Now the Sertoli cells, testosterone works with a hormone called inhibin. And what they do is that they send a signal, a negative feedback loop to the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland to say, hey, stop it, the tanks are full, we don't need any more. Now when they need more, okay, it's gonna say, okay, we need more coming down here, so you're gonna have a positive loop. So this is how it all starts right here, the regulation of spermatogenesis, testosterone, and androgen binding protein. Okay, so when it comes to prolactin, testosterone, dopamine, how does it all play together? Because it does play together in a big way that a lot of people don't talk about. Now, I wanna talk about prolactin. Now, prolactin is produced, we, males and females, we have what's called oxytocin. Oxytocin is your binding hormone, okay? Oh, this is why females, they love to hug, they love cuddling, they, they love stuffed animals. Why? Because it takes 20 seconds of that action to release oxytocin, which for females, it increases estrogen, it makes them feel better. Breastfeeding females, the oxytocin by hugging the baby and bringing the baby to the nipple stimulates prolactin, which prolactin in a female stimulates the milk production in the mammary glands, so it allows the mama to breastfeed her child. In males, oxytocin, it takes 40 seconds, 40 seconds of cuddling, of bonding, 40 seconds to release something different, it doesn't increase our testosterone, it, what it does, it lowers our blood pressure. It works with the posterior pituitary gland to release vasopressin, which helps lower our blood pressure. However, how long does it take? 40 seconds. Males, we're not huggers by nature, so how long does the average male hug? Two pats. Grandpa, three. So now we're 30, what, 39.5 seconds of the hole of hugging, torture. <laughs> But the thing is with males, the oxytocin does release prolactin. What is the function of prolactin? Prolactin, you know, when males have a elevated prolactin levels, it's called hyperprolactemia. And that's not a good thing at all. Because why? Because prolactin has an inverse relationship with testosterone. So the more prolactin that the man is being released, is releasing, it lowers our testosterone level. Dopamine and prolactin, they have an inverse relationship as well. So what happens is when you have increased prolactin, what does that do to the sexual function? ED, erectile dysfunction, lower libido, infertility, and I'll get to that in a minute. How is it released? Prolactin is released a couple different ways. One, uh, through the dopamine pathway with medication, but also every time a man has an orgasm, now, either you're masturbating or you're having sex with a partner. When you're having sex with a partner, it increases exponentially. But when a man has an orgasm, it increases prolactin levels, which will lower dopamine. And this is called the post-refractory period. This is why after a man ejaculates, he's just gassed out. The thing is, dopamine restrains prolactin levels. So they work to get, again, they work inversely. But again, just review, so what is, what is dopamine, how does that affect testosterone? They, bo they both influence each other. So dopamine is important for libido, I'll get to that in a second. Testosterone re regulates its released. How? Through, again, this negative feedback loop. So when we need more, okay, we're going to tell the hypothalamus to release more GnRH, which downstream is going to increase our testosterone. Dopamine and serotonin, they too have a big play in it as well. So dopamine, what the role of dopamine, it actually inhibits 
the erection, but enhances the ejaculation. Serotonin, the opposite. Serotonin enhances the erection, however, it inhibits ejaculation. Now, males who are on certain SSRIs, the reason why they got on SSRIs, one of the reasons is premature ejaculation. So when males have pre premature ejaculation, what do they do? They get them on SSRIs. Why? Because SSRIs, okay, selective serotonin release inhibitors, it delays ejaculation. Now here's a caveat. Men who are on prolonged SRI, SSRIs, they can't even finish the race. So at first it was great to say, hey, I could use this, you know, so I don't have premature ejaculation. But after a while, I've talked to a lot of my patients and it's like, you know, the, ra the horse can't even finish the race, so why even bother getting on the race? Well, it used to take me two, you know, two minutes. Now it takes me 60 minutes and congratulations, but it doesn't really work that way. So when it comes to prolactin and dopamine, inverse rea relationship, because when a man has an orgasm, it's raised exponentially if he's with a partner, what's going to happen? It's going to lower the dopamine, increase the prolactin. Prolactin, the function of prolactin is to shut down sexual desire. This is why after a man has an orgasm, he doesn't want to do anything. It's the post-refractory period. Guys just gassed out. Now, men who are, let's say, chronic masturbators, okay, there or just they they release it a lot what's going to happen is that it's going to hinder their dopamine levels to the point where it stops the uh, lowers their testosterone levels i'll get to that in a second so what happens is that after the male has an orgasm the prolactin is released and it continues to be released in surges for up to 14 days so ideally the older men i'm saying older men over 35 the time in between ejaculations should be a good seven to 10 days. That is the ample no amount of time in between. Because they have an inver inverse relationship. So increased dopamine, lowers prolactin. Lower pro dopamine, increases prolactin. So I hope this kind of has a brief understanding of how this is all related. Now I'm going to include a video with a link below of how prolactin affects this loop that's going to hinder your testosterone levels. So keep on watching for the next part down below. Thank you. All right, thank you for watching the video. Most importantly, I hope that you learned something. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below and right next to it, the bell notification because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. In addition, if you find that this information is valuable and if you want a free 15 minute consultation, please hit the link down below It'll take you to my website. Again, we could talk either face-to-face, -face, on Zoom, or on a phone call. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Be good.